I'm Dr. Angela McBurdy of drflute.com and today we're learning Kohler's Romantic Etude, Opus 66, Number 6, At the Well. If you have this etude, go get it and bring it and even get your flute out so that we can go over this together and you can stop and start and even uh, play through some of these parts as I'm talking about them. If you don't have it, you can go to my website and download, download them um, and you can have the whole set of these etudes. So let's look at the first two measures. It says Allegretto Agitato in one. So we're not going slowly. We're having a nice fast tempo, but I don't think you have to be insanely fast. It, I don't think it lends itself to being really massively fast here. Um, we have in one, so we're not counting in three, we're counting in one. You have these nice little rumbly slurs. I like to make a little, it says piano, but I do like to have a little bit more sound than maybe a piano gives me. And I do like the agitato, it needs to be agitated. So I'm getting a little edgier with my sound, getting a little more cutting the sound with the edge of the mouthpiece here. All right, now they have, the first two measures have these crescendo, diminuendo, crescendo, diminuendo. I don't think you really need to do anything with that as the um, shape of it kind of does it for you. You can think about a little bit of a swell, but it's really gonna go too fast to do too much. And then you get to ha have this nice agitated staccato at a forte. So you're starting off with this little rumbly wave kind of thing at the beginning. And then uh, it says martellato, Mart martellato. If you're Italian, forgive me. Martellato, it's not one that I have in my musical vocabulary on a regular basis. And what, I guess if you're a string player, you probably know what that means or have an idea. But what it means is the bow strokes. So a bow would be going da, 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 da. Um, and have a really strong um, sound. It's not a bow that's doing this da, 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 all in one bow and then coming back up. This is, so I think, I believe that what it means is strong bowing, um, picking your bow up in between and coming around. And that's what we're doing here. Okay, so I like taking just those two measures plus a pickup out and really making sure that I'm clear, my fingers are moving and I don't have a glitch. Now you're going from this forte and then the next two measures, you're back to your rumbly soft thing. Uh, so keep it nice and loud. And then when you go into your measure, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, measure six and seven, here you're back to your r rumbly sound, um, different notes, but it's still rumbly. <laughs> So you get to have four measures of um, this rumbly way stuff where you really, I think it builds the agitation. So measures six through 10, you're back to the uh, rumbly waves. And I think that that can really add to this agitated feeling. You know you're building up to something and you do, you explode with some more staccatos in a higher key. But first let's look at uh, six and seven. We have these little accents on what would be, if we were counting in three, it would be beat two. Uh, you have accents there. And the question is how much, how much should you accent? It's going to be a breath accent. And it's still soft, so I think it's where you get to have a choice. What do you like? Do you like to bring it out and have it be sort of um, a ha, I told you, in the middle of it? Or do you want to just have a little bit of a stumble there in the middle of those little low rumblies? 
I think that it is your choice and it can sound good either way. Now measure 8, 9, and 10. We're building diminuendos there. And now a little bit higher. We're a step higher uh, than we were in the first two measures in 9 and 10. Doing much the same thing. We're just moved it up uh, because our uh, staccatos are going to be higher and louder and um, give us more of that agitated feel. Measure 11, pick up to 12. Now for both 4 and 5 and 12 and 13, I do like to work on just the arpeggiated part of that. make sure that my tone is coming through as I come down that arpeggiated run. And then when I stick the off beats in, I can make sure that my tone is sounding good, but I am uh, maybe a tad bit heavier on the arpeggio coming down and not quite as heavy on the off beat on the uh, higher side. Uh, oftentimes we do those equal and then I don't hear I just hear all all the notes and I don't want to I want to hear a shape I want to hear the shape coming down I also don't want to accent them so I don't want um, Practicing like that can help you really bring out the arpeggio when you finally put it back into context. But right now, if I play it like this, that's probably how I want to play it when it's in the piece. I don't want to have it any louder than that. Uh, and so if I learn to play like that, that's where I, then the other notes have to just come into the background just a little bit more. All right, now there's our accent on beat two again. Okay, so our opening is done. Now we are moving into sort of the B section. And this, we have a crescendo and then a soft, and a crescendo and then a soft. So here's my crescendo in measure 17. Soft. Crescendo. Soft. All right. That's a nice place to work to really feel that ebb and flow. That's the ebb and flow. Back to 17 and I'll go on. Now, a whole bunch of staccato. And I feel like single tonguing those. If you wanted to double tongue them, that you can. Uh, I don't feel for me that that's a really heavy, loud section. I think of it more as scurrying my dee 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 as I get into the next ebb and flow little bit uh, and moving up to my same staccatos, although moving them up a third from, from here. So back to 21. And make sure it's just, I, it's even. I'm not trying to bring anything out. I don't really feel like there's any special note in there. I'm just moving along to the next rumbly uh, ebb and flow wave section. All right, so I've gotten through that. I'm in measure 25, ending on the B flat in measure 25. So here again, crescendo, and then the piano, and then the crescendo, and then the piano. Let them be really noticeable, really crescendo. 25, soft. 
And now I'm going to scamper across the keys again. And now I come in soft and I, I want this to move and flow, move and flow. At the well, uh, the only thing I can conjure up is this water, the dripping water, the moving water here. But I, I sort of feel this more of an ocean wave than um, the ripples in a well. Measure 33. All right, so 33 through 40, we're leading back to a section where we're going to retardando and bring back the A section, the beginning, bring back those ideas. Um, at 33, it's the piano. So he's all the way through this piece. He's superimposing the, the fortes and the pianos, the fortes, the piano, crescendo, and then soft, and crescendo and soft. So I really like to bring that out and do that every chance that I can get. So measure 33, I'm soft. All right, and then we just repeat that low section. Something that he likes to do is he doesn't, um, except for a few times, does he ever keep the group of six that are in a measure of 16th notes together as one melodic a line. He likes to do four and two into the next measure. So if we're counting in three, two, three, and beat one are part of a melodic idea. Two, three, into one. That sort of throws off a steady beat feeling like that. Uh, so it's nice to, to uh, let it flow, let it ebb and flow, and to really use that uh, piano and then the forte to not feel like we have a one all the time and a one all the time. Uh, so back to 33. And I like to retard on oh, just a little bit right there. That's measure 39 into 40, even though 40, 41, 42, 43, I'm going to eventually slow down to get us into measure 44, which is really the same as measure one and two. So 37. Really get that nice diminuendo. Now, something if you don't know, this is D, C sharp, D, C sharp, D, C, D, C sharp, D, C sharp, D, B, D, C sharp, D, C sharp. This D, C sharp movement um, is very clunky. You can, except for when you have to do a C natural, you can leave these fingers down. So as I'm doing, these fingers are going to do the moving right there. When I go to the C natural, I have to move. Then I can be back. And it makes the movement just a little bit smoother through that section. So I like to give that. There's an accent on one or diminuendoing. I like to rollentando in 43, but actually I like to crescendo just a little bit instead of diminuendo. So I go against what's written there a little bit and crescendo into 44, but then 44 is back to being soft. So here's 40. softly. But really what's called for is, is crescendoing at the end. So if I go back to 64, 64 we're crescendo each time we do 64, 65, 66, same pattern, right? In each one crescendos, each one crescendos. So you have to start softer at 64 and then back off again at 65. Not a subito soft, but back off a little bit. 
And then end nice and big. So let's do that in tempo. And then you have this nice agitated ending. I sort of feel like uh, I always want to end soft through there and, and peter out to nothing. But what's called for is a forte. So that's At the Well, Opus 66, The Romantic Etudes by Kohler. It's a great etude. The whole set are fantastic. Go to my website if you don't own them. And you can go to drflute.com slash downloads. And you can get these etudes and work on them on your own. And then come back to this video and stop it and start it and play through and learn this etude. And then go from the beginning to the end. It makes just a, such a wonderful musical idea. Enjoy learning At the Well by Kohler.